I don't even know how one begins to create a baby belly jumpsuit, but they made one for me. But I think the funny, <laughs> funniest part was when I took that bodysuit back to my trailer. You know, I've never been pregnant before. And so it was a kind of surreal experience to put on this bodysuit. And I was um, with a friend at the time. She was like, so do you think when you're pregnant, you can like do all the things you do now? And I'm like, what do you mean? She's like, I don't know, like lunges and like jumping and like play basketball. And I was like, I don't know. Let me try. So, <laughs> Hey, Noah Glenn Bennett here, founder of Against the Tide Media. And I come bearing a message. Our channel is your channel. So if you enjoy these videos, please subscribe if you haven't already. Like this video. You'd be surprised by how much leaving a simple comment helps boost YouTube's algorithms and puts our channel in front of so many more people. I actually made a video like this a while back and apparently it helped. A lot. The team and I are working harder than ever to create content with the cast and crew of your favorite light inspiring movies and shows. And surprise, now we're making our own. Answer Anti, a story that dares to ask if even the man who could be used as the Antichrist has a chance for redemption. You can learn more about how to support that project at antiseries.com. Thank you so much, on with the show. Welcome back to another episode of Chatting with the Chosen. My name is Kanan, and today I have a very special guest with me. I'm very excited about it is Mariah. Now you'll know Mariah from being Ooh. yes, you'll know Mariah from being uh, <laughs> the season finale of The Chosen. I was there in the theater, and like she came on, and I was like, oh my gosh, it's her, it's her. I knew you were gonna be on there, but I I did that anyway because I'm a fan. And I have, I want to start out with this story before we really begin into the questions. Back in, I think, 2021, your husband, Joel, was on the Relate Tour. And me and one of my best friends, we were going to see that in Lexington, Kentucky. And on the way, we were talking about our favorite people. And I'm a big you fan and for King and Country fan. And I was talking about, yeah, Mariah and Joel, date, oh, married, sorry, not dating, married and all this kind of stuff. That's amazing. And my best friend, she literally stopped and she goes, what? They're married? And I said, yes. And she said, you don't understand. Mariah is my Taylor Swift. I was like, oh my gosh, yes, she's awesome. And then we saw you there and you gave us a courtesy wave. And so, <laughs> and yeah, we saw you walk by to the family seats and we were like, oh my gosh, Mariah, hi. And you're like, hey. And so I feel like I already know you. Hi, Mariah. <laughs> How are you? Hey, man. I'm so good. I'm so good. And I, I, I've never heard, um, I've never seen such a, a delightful courtesy wave. So I'll have to, I'll have to pick that up from you when I, something like you did something like that. I'll try and do that next time. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like my wave is very like over the yeah. top. So I'll try and do it more classy like that next time. <laughs> well, of course, we're obviously here to talk about your role in the Chosen season three finale. I remember seeing that on Instagram and just being like, of course, that why not? That's awesome. And so we've got a mix of fan questions and questions that I have done. And what I want to know is, first of all, what was this process like? Was there an audition process or were you presented with the role? There was an audition process. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm actually really thankful that, um, you asked that question because I, I, I could totally see how it could potentially be seen as like, okay, special request, come play this role. Um, and I, I, it's probably my pride, uh, but I don't, I don't like handouts. So the audition was really, uh, I will never forget. I will never forget that audition because I was here in this exact room in my studio at home. And um, I had one of my colleagues uh, read the other part with me. She actually has a background in film and she moved here from LA. And so I asked her to, to read the part with me. And it was, um, it was a really, really dramatic role. Uh, it's 
kind of like a general testing role. So it wasn't, it wasn't a role that was actually being cast. It was just a very dramatic scene that showed a lot of range. And um, there was one point in the audition where I had to basically like have an emotional breakdown, fall on the ground. The character I was playing opposite was like screaming at me and and yelling at me and, and berating me. And uh, she was like, I got paid to do that today. What a day at work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she did. <laughs> as soon as we, you know, hit cut uh, and I stood up and I'm like wiping my tears, uh, my essentially employee looked at me and she was like, I don't know that I will ever have the opportunity again to scream at you and belittle you in the way that I just did. And I don't think I ever want the opportunity to do that again. Please tell me we don't have to record that audition again. And thankfully I, I felt like we, we had prepped hard enough so that we could, we could get it the first time. So it was a funny audition in the end. Um, very heavy, very emotional, but then pretty awkward circumstances as soon as we hit cut. So I'm interested, how many rounds of like auditions were there? So I auditioned for, I want to say two separate roles and each role had several different scenes to audition with. Yeah, it was all in all, maybe, you know, six to eight scenes. Yeah, that's awesome. I, I I know about you, of course, but I want to know for our new audience, have you always wanted to sing and act or was this endeavor into acting something totally new? I know you've done another project before, but talk a little about that. Yeah, I, uh, you know, growing up in L.A., it's it's hard to avoid it. <laughs> yeah, most most of my friends were either commercial or film actors, actresses. Um, I, I had a sweet little boyfriend in high school who was on a Nickelodeon show and, and, um, you're just, you're in that space. You're in that world. I think the beauty of that is it never had any mystique or allure to me. Like I, I went on sets to go hang out with my friends. I, I went to, you know, Disney studios. I went to, um, you know, Teen Choice Awards, all the things. And so, and and not as a, as an actress or anything, just as like a normal teenager. And um, I think because of my familiarity with it, I've not pursued it in the same way that I've pursued music. You know, moving to Nashville, stepping into this like music hub was a, uh, completely immersive and totally different than anything I had been exposed to growing up. Um, but the, the sweet part about, you know, this season is like life kind of goes in circles and in rotations. And this is certainly a full circle moment where, um, I grew up helping friends audition for shows. Now I'm auditioning for shows. You know, I, I grew up going and visiting friends on set. And now I'm, I'm on sets myself for as long as I keep encountering the right opportunities. You know, I want to do everything that comes uh, in front of me with absolute excellence to the best of my abilities. Um, but it is really special that a lot of this has just found me in this season of life. And um, I'm really, really thankful for every acting opportunity I've gotten recently. That's so amazing. So how long did you have between, well, okay, tell me about getting the part and then how long it took between getting the part to filming and what you had to do to prepare. Yeah, it was, it was pretty quick after I, after I got the role, I think it was just a few months before, before shooting. I'm starting to learn that that's kind of a part of the deal. Like you get cast and then like the next week you're <laughs> on a plane to another another uh, country. So it was a quick turnaround in the end. And so prepping for the role, you know, because it's such a, 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 a quick feature, um, you know, the, the focus was really on the accent and how to really nail that mid Atlantic, very neutral combination tonality. So I think because I'm a, a musician and I've got that musician's ear, I I tend to mimic naturally. And so um, 
after a few sessions with a dialect coach, I got very familiar with the sound and, um, yeah, I'm, I'm pleased with, with how it sounded in the end. A work in progress is better than no work at all. <laughs> no progress. I'm looking forward to it as well. But if I may, where are the harps, lyres and flutes? Instead of singing and using instruments, the text will be spoken, accompanied by a low hum from the choir. The human voice, the most beautiful instrument of all. A wonderful idea. Thank you, sire. May it please the king. And the king. Oh, him most of all. I thought you did great. That was, it was a really awesome Thank performance. Um, Thank so you. obviously playing the role of Bathsheba and especially at the state that she and David kind of, um, it alludes to in the show. I'm wondering how did you stay emotionally grounded in the scene? And for me, mm. I'm an emotional person. And so I can, it's hard for me to control my emotions and keep them at bay. So how did you keep those under control or grounded? Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I think if you're an emotional person, you should be an emotional person. And um, when acting, you know, I, I've had really lovely advice from great friends over the years. And, and one of my favorite pieces of advice um, came from my men, my friend Milo, um, who I just shot a film with um, earlier this year. And he said, an actor's job is essentially to, to not, to respond. So, so don't be interesting, be interested. Oh, um, and so in, in my role of Bathsheba, there were moments where I did feel emotional. I didn't, I didn't try to hide that. Um, I tried to just allow whatever I was feeling to come forward and to show on my face and, and to not try and hide it or change it either, you know, cause the scene we were filming was really, really beautiful. It was a, you know, this candlelit um, courtyard with the stars above us. It was an open space. And so we could see into the night sky and, um, and there was this really gifted actor giving this monologue and reading a song. And, uh, you know, you had singers in the background humming. When the water saw you, oh God. When the water saw you, they were afraid. Indeed, the deep trembled. The clouds poured out water. The skies gave forth thunder. Your arrows flashed on every side. The crash of your thunder was in the whirlwind. Your lightnings lighted up the world. The earth trembled and shook. Your way was through the sea. Your path through the great waters. Yet your footprints were unseen. Is ready. And so it was just this very poetic, very, very poetic moment. And I know the show really um, has made a mark by how real and grounded it is. And so for there to be a poetic moment like that, I was just honored to be a part of it. And I let myself respond exactly how I would have responded if I was out of costume and just you know, sitting before a man giving a, a, a gorgeous monologue. Yeah, it was it was a very powerful scene. And I remember I was going mm. through some stuff at that time. And just like after when it comes back from the walking on water scene and goes back mm -hmm. to you know, at the end, it was just like the tear. <laughs> I've, I've never been through, you know, what Simon and Eden were going through, which obviously reflects yeah. David and Bathsheba. Yeah. But yeah. I remember like dealing with the struggle and being angry at the Lord or not feeling satisfied in um, where he had me at that moment. And so your performance played a role in, in me understanding the scene and being impacted. And I just want to thank you. Wow. For that. Um, Absolutely. Kanan. Yeah. <laughs> so what was uh, your biggest memory from being on set? Mm, probably the, uh, when we were in wardrobe prep um, on set, it was the 
day before filming or a couple of days before filming. And I needed to go in and have my character fitting. So, you know, we have these trailers where they have the different pieces and, you know, accessories, props, whatever prepared for you to try on and make sure everything fits. And they've got an incredible wardrobe department, very, very gifted men and women in that, in that space. And so they wanted me to try on this baby belly that they had made handmade <laughs> from scratch. I don't even know how one begins to create a baby belly jumpsuit, but they made one for me. Oh, and good um, me. good afternoon project. Yes, yes. Lots of stuffing involved, I'm sure. Um, but I think the funny, <laughs> funniest part was when I took that bodysuit back to my trailer you know, I've never been pregnant before. And so it was a kind of surreal experience to put on this bodysuit. And I was um, with a friend at the time. And she, uh, she was like, so do you think when you're pregnant, you can like, do all the things you do now? And I'm like, what do you mean? She's like, I don't know, like lunges and like jumping and like play basketball. And I was like, I don't know, let me try. So <laughs> I basically like, was doing ridiculous acrobat moves in my uh trailer with a baby belly outfit on just to test it just to get a feel you know what are the limitations you know can you see your toes can you not you know can you bend in certain angles can you not I, you know for all of those women out there who are uh, as far along as my character was i just want to say congratulations um and well done on bending over because that is an accomplishment Yes, they they win. Uh, when you got the part or when people found out that you got the part, what did your friends and family think? Oh, my family was thrilled. Um, my my parents are big fans of the show, big supporters of the show. Um, I actually didn't tell my husband that I was auditioning for it. I don't know. I just didn't want to tell him unless I actually got the role. So once I got it, I was, I was really happy to tell him and he was very, uh, very happy for me. Um, he's very much a supporter of all of the crew and cast. I did put it out to Dallas so you can hold me accountable here because it's documented about having some kind of cameo in the next couple yeah. seasons. So yeah, you can't. You, you're a little too uh, Roman looking to be a, to a Jewish disciple. I can Jesus, be Roman, but you can be a Roman, a Roman soldier. I think the most surprising response came from some of my friends. Um, you know, when you when you live in the buckle of the Bible Belt, like Nashville, Tennessee, you know, you you. I think you deal with a lot of um, unlearning, unwinding. Uh, if you grew up going to church, you know, you kind of enter into your 20s and 30s going, now, what do I really believe? Like, do I keep any of this? Do I throw it all out? Do I start from scratch? Do I blow it all up? Do I burn it all down? You know, we got to ask those questions to find what it is that, you know, we really count as true. Quite a number of friends, but there was one in particular, he grew up um, with uh, his father being a pastor. And his dad was actually a pastor for for my husband and I for a while. Um and he said, Mariah, this show is so incredible. I'm so glad you're a part of it. I grew up hearing about the Bible, reading scriptures, listening to sermons my whole life. And it wasn't until watching The Chosen that things really clicked for me. And my heart really resonated with the stories that I grew up hearing. And so I thought that was really beautiful to hear that kind of response from someone with that kind of story. Yeah, that's that's such an honor. Um, I, I know that like you may not know, but if you do and if you can disclose, do you think that you will be returning for season four or any upcoming seasons for a backstory background kind of thing? I mean, that's the question. That is the question, Kanan. And the answer is. <laughs> That's the question. <laughs> oh, that makes me feel so good. <laughs> hmm. That is the, the question. question. All right, Snipe Life, what have you got for us?
That is the question, isn't it? Well, it's at least one of the questions of many that we've already answered here on The Snipe Life, and she is actually going to be in Season 4. Here's some proof of her in the behind the scenes. Looks like we might get Solomon as well, and some other really interesting things with King David in particular. So I'm really excited for what's coming up in Season 4. Well, thanks so much for that, Brandon. There you have it. Continue. I have to know, okay, so when you announced the part, I immediately started theorizing of what you were going to be. And I swore mm-hmm. up and down, left and right, every direction I could that you were playing Pilate's wife. I just, I just mm. knew that's what you were playing. Partially because you made a reel on set and you pointed to this in one of the trailers, a thing of like the Romans, um, like a bulletin board or something about the Romans. Uh-huh. And I was like, that's uh-huh. it. I know who she is. I don't know anybody else she could be playing. And I would talk to my friends about it. But I'm interested to know if you like saw people theorizing and were like, you got it, you didn't, that kind of thing. There's a lot of Sherlock and Holmes out there. I mean, everyone was uh, doing a lot of investigating, <laughs> reading into every every post, which was really cool to see. Um, I saw a lot of guesses and a few people got it right, which was really impressive to me because you know, this, this narrative is a time hop, you know, it's, it's kind of leaving the characters that you're really living with and it's going uh, back in time. So for some of the people who put it together, I was very, very impressed. Although I did have a friend who guessed Jezebel and I was like, I don't even know if those time frames line up, but you know, what I've come to learn, if you live in the South, if someone says you've got the spirit of Jezebel, apparently that's a bad thing. <laughs> so I'm like, yes. I love that you think that I would be Jezebel. What about me gives you Jezebel vibes? I don't know. <laughs> would have been like, first of all, rude. Second of all. <laughs> oh, I would have taken that role in a heartbeat. That would have been a blast. <laughs> that's awesome. So your friend wasn't just being rude. So how difficult was it for you to keep the secret of the scene? Because obviously it was very secretive or at least looked like it. It was, it was. And and I will say the chosen production crew does a really good job of keeping things under wraps. Um, We had very specific guidelines as to what we were allowed to share and not share. Um, And even social media wise, you know, we had to, get things approved if we were going to post about it. So I like that. I like that they, you know, try to maintain the mystique and, um, and, and the intrigue, uh, it, you know, it's, it's fun and games in the end. It makes things special, it makes things like you anticipate them so much more. The scene that we are shooting is so special. It involves <laughs> and, <laughs> and here. So you know what that means. This amazing set. I mean, isn't that just gorgeous? The set just looks so abundantly amazing. And what's your name again? And you are. Oh my gosh, we got it. What is your Mm -hmm. favorite episode of The Chosen? Wow. And you can pick up all the time or this season, whatever. I don't know if I have a favorite episode. I I think I have, I think I have a favorite character. Gosh, this is just going to sound very, very cliche, but I, I really love how Jesus is portrayed in this series because, you know, a lot of us are exposed to very one dimensional types of interpretations of, of Jesus. Um, you know, we all have the same data to go off of. We've got scriptures, we've got history, we've got historical accounts. And, and yet there are so few people who are using their imagination to put this character together. And so um, I'm really thankful that it's a version of Jesus that is kind of sarcastic, clever, witty, empathetic, patient, kind of aggressive. Like I, I love, I love this version. It it allows us and reminds us that these characters that we read about are just like you and me, Kanan. They're multifaceted, they're um, emotional, they're uh, sensitive. And um, 
offensive, all of it. I like that. I know for me, when I saw this show for the first time, it made me think they finally got my Jesus on screen. Like the one that I know. Oh, they finally got him on there. Um, yeah. What did you think when you saw the final, like the final cut of the episode? When did you see it? I saw it uh, when it premiered. I was in Spain uh, working on a film and my mom was with me. And because of the time change, we had to stay up to like midnight, I think, to watch it. And um, we watched it together and uh, just we were so blown away by the whole by the whole thing, especially because the theme that I was in um, was originally meant to happen just at the end. And it was really cool to see how they wove it into the beginning and then kind of had a full circle completion at the end. It was really sweet. That was great. Um, like you just mentioned that you were in Spain. I know it is public knowledge. You were, you're filming a movie in Spain or did. What can you yep. tell us about that? And how soon will we know more? Ooh, so you can learn a whole lot on uh, the World Wide Web. There have been several press releases about it, and it's a, a nativity musical uh, starring my friend Fiona plays Mary, uh, and then my friend Milo plays Joseph, and then um, Antonio Banderas plays the role of Herod. So it's quite the cast, and it was a two-month shoot. I moved to Spain for two months. Like, I can't believe I'm saying those words out loud. And, um, I mean, absolutely brilliant crew. The most professional and kind and passionate crew that I've ever worked with, you know, gave me an opportunity to practice my Spanish as well. The film is in English, uh, but the crew was mainly local. Yeah, the, the experience in itself was one that I think I'll, you know, tell, tell our children about. Uh, and I just saw the first 20 minutes of the film because I, I became really close friends with, um, Adam and Nikki, uh, Anders who crafted the script and wrote the music and spent over a decade prepping this story and this script. And so we went to their house and we were in LA and watched, watched the first 20 minutes. And I was like, <laughs> I... And not even going to try and play like I'm some cool thespian. Like I'm freaking out. It was a great first 20 minutes and I cannot wait to see the rest. That is so awesome. And just like me, I'm a Bible nerd. I'm a musical theater nerd, just a music person in general. And so yeah. I am very excited. I will definitely be seeing that. I can't wait. Going back to like cameos in The Chosen and things like that. Speaking mm -hmm. of cameos. Is there a chance that we will see you in the upcoming For King and Country movie, Unsung Hero? You know, you might have to watch and keep an eye out. Um, I was I was pretty, as they as the Aussies would say, chock a block uh, each day of filming as one of the co-producers. Um, you know, I'll I'll say this: if you can find me in unsung hero i will venmo you 25 dollars, a solid 25 cash so obviously we know you from your music as well do you have any new music in the works or any collaborations in the works yeah uh, speaking of full circle moments i am collaborating with one of my favorite producers in the world his name is paul mabry and he played drums on my very first album. So I've known him since I was 17 years old. After that record, he went on and produced a bunch of Grammy Award winning albums. And um, we reconnected this year and uh, started writing together. And um, we've got some studio dates this summer and we're putting out a record, hopefully very soon. But um, when it's ready. That is amazing. Okay. So who are some of your musical influences? Ooh, I've got a lot. Um, I mean, top of mind would be 
the artists that I've grown up listening to the longest, you know, the artists that shaped me as a child, um, Earth, Wind and Fire, Shania Twain, Edie Gourmet, Ilos Panchos, it's a beautiful Spanish singer, Selena, she sung in Spanish and English. I only started listening to this girl a couple of years ago when she became a friend, uh, Amanda Lindsay Cook. And um, as a woman, I admire her as a songwriter. I like worship her. Ironically, she's a worship leader. So that's probably very sacrilegious to say, but she is wonderful. That's, that's so awesome. And I think that having such broad taste, like is very beneficial to music and to your music. Cause of course I think mm. you're great. Mm. I'm curious, what is your most recent addition to your playlist? Like Spotify, Apple music, whatever. Yeah. I'm a big, big playlist gal. Like if you go on my Spotify page, you will see basically a playlist for like every activity for reading, for working, for cooking, for driving. Like there's a playlist for everything. I'm a fan of music. Um, so I'm always adding new artists. I, I think the artist that I've added most recently, and I literally earlier today was just playing his best of records is a trumpet player named Rafael Mendez. Um, my grandfather played trumpet and they would have been contemporaries just timeline wise. And he emigrated, um, to the States and had to stop playing trumpet and, uh, worked in a car garage and then eventually got more opportunity to play trumpet, ended up putting out 300 pieces of music throughout his lifetime. Um, one piece that he made very famous is a beautiful, if you have the chance to look it up, it's called La Virgin Virgen de Macarena. And I know Macarena is like, everyone knows like Macarena. But Macarena is actually a, a, a Spanish name, and it is probably the most beautiful piece of instrumental music I have ever heard. It made me cry. So yeah, if you need a good tear jerker, listen to that. I'm always down for a tear jerker. Okay, I've got about <laughs> I've got about like three questions left. What is something I love asking people this? Um, what is something you wish people would ask you that they don't really? Or if you have one. I I wish people would ask me more about my sister. Tell me about your sister. <laughs> She's phenomenal. And one of my favorite humans on earth and so much cooler, so much crasser, so much smarter and so much hotter than me. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, finally, how can we be praying for you? That's a great, great question. Um, I mean, the thing I'm always asking God and the world for is more mentors. I feel like mentors are the kind of thing that is a gift. Like you're given mentors. The world gives you mentors. You don't necessarily go out and find them. Like I've tried that before and it typically doesn't end well. Um, but I think it's really important to live with a witten around you. You know, it's what I call the the women that I call on when I need to make a big decision um, or when I just need someone to check me. You know, what am I missing? What are my blind spots? Having mentors with different backgrounds, different religious beliefs, different um, ethnic backgrounds. It's, it's really it's really beneficial because, you know, they'll call out things in you that, that you don't always see. So yeah, I'm always asking for more mentors in my life. Awesome. Well, we'll be praying for that. I don't want to take up any more of your time. I know you have things to do. I do have one more question. This is kind of a personal thing, um, but I think it can benefit the other people out there watching. Um, me, my main passion is music. I sing, I, I tour, I do that kind of stuff, and I want to do it for the Lord. So what kind of advice would you give to uh, young artists, whether that's in music or in acting, however? Hmm. Golly, I don't feel qualified to answer that question because uh, there are many days myself where I am speaking advice on how to do this very nebulous ethereal work well, you know, we're, 
we're working with invisible airwaves. Um, it's not like we're building a fence where you can finish the job and look at what you've done and be done and get paid and move on to the next thing. It's a, it's a very, um, it's a very different kind of work and, and, um, and both are very valuable, that very tangible work of having built something and stepped away from it, having built a song and stepped away from it as well. You know, the, the challenge is you don't actually know what the end result will ever be. You don't know if that song you've just poured your heart into is ever going to be heard by the rest of the world. You don't know if that audition you've been preparing for for weeks will ever be seen, let alone past the producers, let alone whether you'll get the part or not. So there's a lot that we can control as musicians and, and artists and creatives and actresses uh, as far as diligence, studying, honing our craft. Um, but there's a lot that we can't control with the end result. So I think in order to simply not go mad, it's important to just enjoy the work and don't see it as a means to an end because you don't know what the end will be. So enjoy the means. That is, that's a lot of what I needed to hear. So I thank you so much for that. Thank you so much, Mariah, for joining us for chatting with The Chosen. I know it was such a pleasure to get to talk to you. And I can't wait to see what else you've got coming along the way. I can't wait to see this musical. And I will talk to y'all hopefully sometime in the future. Thank you, Kane. And it was a pleasure to talk with you. Thank you. All right. Bye. What? Were you expecting there to be a blooper reel here or something? wonder why you'd think that. Wow, you're really still here. Uh, most people, they just click away as soon as the credits start rolling, but I mean, hey! Props to you for sticking till the end. Oh, I mean, I'm probably gonna just put an ad here or here, because we are a monetized YouTube channel. Wow, you're really still here? Okay. Well, I mean, as long as you are, you could hit that like button, notification bell, comment, subscribe. All those things help the algorithms go up. Yeah. It's helpful. Well, anyway, I'm probably gonna go to bed or something. Thanks. Toodaloo.